You are a product of your environment, your experiences, your encounters, and your exposure in life. So in this video, I want to speak about mindsets. And the truth is your mindset can become a limitation to you reaching your purpose and fulfilling destiny in life. Or it can be an accelerator to help you give you the potential to reach out for God's will. His good is acceptable and his perfect will. God's good will is for your benefit. His acceptable will is for you to be able to agree with his word and please him. His perfect will is for you to come to the completeness of who he made you to become, which is scripture tells us that we should be holy as our father in heaven is holy. And for us to be that, we don't have to become common. But when we are in a place of conformity to our environment, to our world, we become common. We become like everybody else. We think like everybody else. We behave like everybody else. So then, what is the difference between you and another person? If there's no difference between you and another person, why do you expect God to treat you special? I always do say to my friends, if you are casual with God, what makes you think that you should be treated specially by Him? It is just simple. So if you want God to treat you special, don't be common like everybody else. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For us to conform, it is just for us to look like the society, to look like what our culture tells us to be, to be defined by who we were made to be, by the culture and our environment and our exposure and our experiences. And a lot of people experience trauma, which some of it, is not as a result of their choice. But the truth is, whatever happened to you, whatever experience, whatever encounter, it is your decision as you mature and develop in life to choose either to conform to what had happened to you or to be transformed to God's will. And I've come to the place of knowledge to know that God's will is the best for me. Even when I may not feel like it, even when I might feel in my mind that I can know what to do, the truth is, scripture has informed me and I know for certain now that I cannot lean on my understanding because I'm not that wise. I don't have such understanding to know what the future holds. And only God can lead me to that place of truth to be able to fulfill his purpose in my life. The purposes and plans I've had for my life, when I look at it in retrospect, they were so tiny. They were so puny and so small. It was just like, oh, get the money build a house, buy a car, marry, take care of their children, and what next? Die? And God says, I have so much more for you. I want you to impact the world. I want you to reach out to people. There are people that are waiting in line for you to bless them, for you to be a blessing to them. Like God told Abraham, come out of your country, of your kindred, and go to the place that I have called you to, because I will make you a blessing. And the truth is, all of us, there is a purpose of God on our lives that God wants to make you and I a blessing to people. And if everything that you have for your life does not involve you becoming a blessing to other people, then you are limited, still limited. And we're talking about mindset, it is not just about spiritual things. It is even with the relationship that we have with people, the career that we choose, the decisions that we make, our mindset affects everything we do. Because it forms the basis for our perception, the lens we view life. And I came to this place that I told God, God, please align me to fit your will of my life. And for me to become more intentional with working with God to bring that to fruition, I prayed another prayer to God. Expose to me the myths that I have believed about life. Because it comes to a place of me understanding the myths that I've believed against the truth for me to come to a place of being unraveled from this myth to live in truth. And in this video, the first consideration I want to make is what we do say, which is what you believe works for you. I know that is a statement that has been made and people use it and people even believe it. But somehow a lot of people use it as if it's a stamp to whatever they believe. Like what you believe works for you, believe your own, let me believe my own. It was not given as a stamp or a confirmation for you to believe anything you want to believe. It was given as a warning to warn you against what you believe. Because it is like saying, whatever you believe works for you. Which means if you believe wrong, it will lead you wrong. If you believe right, 
it will work for you the right way. Which is, you should be more careful of what you choose to believe. Because what you choose to believe affects your life directly. And what I would want to say to that, not to change the statement, but to make it clearer is, what you believe affects you. Whether in your spiritual life, in your physical life, or anything you do at all in this life. If you believe right, you're going to live right. If you believe wrong, you're going to live wrong. Because your belief will influence your decisions. That is why it will affect you. Because your belief forms the basis of how you view life, how you view people. Your belief about people forms the basis of how you view them. And Proverbs 23, 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. For you to come to a place of thinking that way, it means that's what you believe. And for example, in a relationship that a lady wants to go into, if she has the mindset that all men cheat, she won't be expecting any man that will not cheat. She will only be preparing herself to manage the one she accepts in her life, which is such a poor perception because it is not based on truth. All men do not cheat. There are good men out there who don't cheat, who don't have a desire to cheat. What is the difference between them and those that cheat? It is self-control. Is self-control a thing that you believe that is possible? Yes. But if you are someone that feels like there is no way a man can be with a woman in a relationship without sex happening, then that is what will happen to you. That is what you'll be expecting. Because at the point that you meet someone who doesn't want to cheat, you're like, is he hiding something? You're now suspicious of the person. You're now like, I need to know if it is real. But to help you should be you investigating what is the principle that keeps this person to say they don't want to cheat. When the rich young ruler met Jesus and said, good master, what must I do to have eternal life? Jesus said, no one is good but God. And that is the truth. Because if God does not make you good, you cannot be good. There are people that do good things not as if they are good. Because your goodness is a virtue that comes from your heart, your intentions, your motives and everything about you. The fact that someone does good things doesn't mean they are good people. People can just be nice and put out kind gestures. That doesn't make them good people at the core. Some people do things because of what they can get in return. And that aside, if a woman believes all men want sex, she will not go into a relationship expecting to practice purity. Because every relationship she goes into, she just knows and thinks to herself, this is what this man needs. She just believes and thinks to herself, this is what this man wants. And that is what she wants to give to him. But that is not based on truth. That is just a myth that has been passed down because majority of men have portrayed that. But the fact that all the men you've met are portraying that attitude does not mean that all men, all men do that. They want sex in their relationship. There are men that want to keep themselves for God. I know of the fact that so many people go to church and they camouflage, which is they are just professing Christians, but they are not practicing Christians. And in the word of God, we were made to be practicing Christians. The people that saw the believers in the act of the apostle and called them Christians, it was a result of the practice of living like Christ. It was not a profession of them saying, oh, I am a child of God, I am of Christ, I am of this. It wasn't based on that. So if your Christianity does not leave a place of profession, you're just telling people, I practice Christianity. That becomes a religion. If it does not leave that place to a place of you living the life as if Christ were to live in you, like Paul Apostle said, the life I live in the flesh, it's no longer I that live. It is Christ that lives in me. That is the life of a believer whose mind is transformed by God. Another myth around this is only women are emotional, men are not. That is a myth, not truth. This will help you in your relationship for you to know that all human beings are emotional beings. That is why we all feel things. And I would be bold to say that most men practice the act of having sex because they want to feel something. Since they don't know how to deal with their emotions, they don't know how to feel. And that is why when they have sex, that's the only way they can feel. But the truth is, if a man were to learn and change his mindset, to believe right and be transformed instead of being conformed to what other men have been doing, instead of being conformed to what society have made men to be, that men are supposed to be hard, that men are not supposed to cry, which is a lie. If a man learns differently and get transformed, that man will know how to relate with a woman and be emotional. That man will know how to express himself. That man will not become an abusive man that tries to manipulate things to work in his favor because now he knows how to communicate he is coherent enough 
to bring out his mind, be vulnerable, to be open, to be transparent, and be honest about everything to make sure that the relationship goes well. It does not happen everywhere. I know all these are wrapped around relationships that I've just mentioned now, but in all areas of life, what you believe affects you. All I'm trying to do is to point to you with these examples and other examples that you have concerning life in general, that your belief affects your life. And what should you do with that? Be careful of your mindset. Checkmate your belief. Ask God, review the myths I've believed about life. Such that when God reviews the myth you believe about life, you can search for truth and live in truth. That is how you can live free. Because scripture says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The second consideration is dealing with familiarity. Familiarity of our environments and the situations we grow up in get us conformed and we get used to it and we call it our normal. And at such point, we never want to change the paradigm. Now, we'll give a proper example that has to do with marriage, which somehow it's kind of something that you may not agree with. There are so many men that go into marriage because of the custom and the tradition and the things that have been done in the generations past. Men are providers. Women are home builders. So men, even till this generation, try to just be the provider, which is he's just conforming to what he has seen and he has known. This is how he saw his father do it. That is how his forefathers did it. And not every man knows well to say, can I grow beyond this? In my relationship, you can apply this to your career. You can apply this to your mindset about life, your finances. Can I grow beyond just thinking about what I can have to eat and settle? Can I grow beyond that and become a blessing for God to bless me financially, for me to be able to bless people? Going back to what I was trying to say, a lot of men become this provider. And in this time and season of life, most women are now working wives and they are also mothers and they are also building their home. But if the man still remains a provider that only brings money and is not investing emotionally to his children or to his family, that woman will be frustrated with the man. And at the point that she's now requesting him to do more because she's bringing more to the table, it will look like you are asking for too much. What happened to the man? He got familiar and he found a normal and he settled down. And what you need to deal with your life is to deal with the things that have become so familiar to you that you now have taken it as a normal. Now, the story in the Bible in Mark chapter 6 is the story of Jesus when he went to his hometown and he preached there in the synagogue. When Jesus goes to other places to do miracles, people get saved a lot. But now in his hometown, people could not be saved. Why? They were telling him, is this not the son of Joseph? Are these not his brothers and sisters that we know? So where is this one coming from? Because we know this man, they are familiar with Jesus. And because of how familiar they are with him, it becomes a normal for them to see him for who he is in the flesh. And they cannot see him for who he is in the spirit as the savior. Now, because of their unbelief, they could not receive. You know, this has to do with the mindset of familiarity. I get familiar with something, I want to settle there. And it can lead to mediocrity because the mindset of familiarity can lead you to become a mediocre because you don't want to try something different. And a quote says that if you keep on doing the same thing, you cannot expect a different result. So in your life, if you don't change your mindset and get transformed, nothing will happen to you. In the case of such man that had gone to that place of just being a provider, he does not know that he can also provide emotionally. He can also be present. It is for him to start transforming his mind, to start learning differently. Or maybe as a single man, you're not married yet. You're listening to this. You should tell yourself the truth. It is not just money that a woman needs. They need care. They need attention. And they need to be loved the way they want to be loved. Because most times, we have a wrong mindset of just saying, I love you. But loving someone does not mean loving them the way you think they should be loved. But the way they want to be loved is how they can receive your love for them. So what do we say about this? Don't get so accustomed to the things you grew up seeing, to the things you were exposed to, to the experiences that happened to you, to the encounters you had in life and to your environment, to the cultures and customs and traditions. Don't get accustomed to them. Search within all these things that form your framework of belief and ask yourself, is there a myth in any of these things that I'm doing? or that I have believed 
God help me to unravel this myth and come to truth. And lastly, renewing your mind. The Bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transformation is a process of growth and development because if you do not develop or move from one place that you are in your mind, you cannot go to a place of transformation. The word transformation in the Greek means to make metamorphose, which is like a butterfly will metamorphose from one stage of development and growth to another stage till it becomes a full-blown, grown butterfly. So is your life. So are you supposed to think that life is not about arriving, but life is a continuous journey of me rediscovering myself, learning new things, unlearning and relearning. Because for you to be transformed, you have to unlearn some things and relearn new things. If you don't do that, you will only conform to what has already been. And you don't need to conform because that is what scripture tells you. Do not be conformed. Change that mindset of conformity. Change that mindset of just being okay with anything. Have the mindset of asking yourself, is this a myth or truth? So that you can walk in the right path and get to fulfill God's true purpose for your life. You can apply this to your spirituality. The legalism preached in church, is this the real truth that Jesus said that will set you free? If you are sincere and you believe in legalism and truly you want to let go of sin, checkmate within your life, is this setting you free? If it is not setting you free, then that truth you believe does not have the power to do that. You should ask yourself then, is this the truth Jesus said will set me free? Because he truly said that the truth will set you free, but then not everything you hear is truth. As scriptures in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22 says, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. What is this trying to say? Mark the words, put off and put on. That is what you should have in your mind. Like you would put on a switch and put off that switch. It is for you to learn that so that you can change your mind. What are myths in my life? Put off. What are the things that do not agree with the life of God or to the will of God? Put off. What are the new things I need to learn? Put on. Wear it like a cloth. Which is, I need to unlearn, to put off some things, to remove some things from my life. And I need, through the Holy Spirit of God, to put on new habits, new character, new behavior, new mindset. Because it has to do with the balance of replacing the old that is no more serving you, to bring in the new. Which is putting off the old wine skin, so that you can put on a new wine skin to receive the new wine of God. The grace of God was given through Jesus Christ as the new wine. How do you receive this grace? Is it by mixing it with the law, with legalism? No. You have to put off legalism to accept the freedom that comes through the grace of God. Salvation that has been given to you free of charge through the blood of Jesus Christ. You have to put off the mindset that you are not worthy to God. To put on the new mindset that God loves you. And you don't need to grab his attention because you have it already. You don't need to beg for forgiveness because you have it already. You just need to allow his forgiveness in you to build in you a life of living to honor him. You have to put off condemnation to put on righteousness as a cloth. Transformation is a continuous work of repentance, which is a continuous renewing of your mind. It does not stop the day you said, I am saved. It even begins that day. The day you tell God, I believe in you. I give my life to you. You're now my Lord and Savior. That's the day the journey begins. It's not arrival. It's the beginning of a new phase of journey. The day you get married is the day you begin the phase of journey of marriage. You were dating. That's a journey. By the time you transition to marriage, you begin another journey. It's about this reiteration of journey upon journey upon journey of life. And you need to change your mind. Do not have a rival mentality so that you can succeed in life. Put off the old. Put on the new. In your character, in the things you do, in everything about your life, put on the new. And ask God for the grace to unveil myths around your life so that you can accept truth and live the life that honors God. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's been a blessing. I am Uwe Mekban. This is my YouTube channel. Do well to subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up. If it has been a blessing to you, do not forget to subscribe and see you in my next YouTube video. Thank you so much. Salutes.